Kia ora, g'day fellow moggers, got an issue, went to uh, get my truck ready to go four wheel driving last weekend and this happened. Oops, damn, clutch went straight to the floor, didn't want to spring back, had a look around, checked to see if I had any broken springs, return springs, blah 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 blah, not good, checked the brake reservoir, yes it is for the clutch, but use brake fluid for the hydraulic clutch, it was empty, topped it up, gave it a bleed, awesome, went to leave the next morning to go forward driving, Bang, straight to the floor. What's the issue? Got a leak somewhere. Alright, so now we've got the bonnet open. Let's get up there and have a look, find out where this leak is. So, first thing to do is locate where everything is without falling off the front of the truck. So, I found the air filter. Yeah, it's a mess, I haven't cleaned up. Right, this little bottle back here. Right, you put brake fluid in this. Hydraulic fluid. Right, which one? Dot three, dot four, dot five, who knows? I just use dot four. Right, there's a little filter on top. Pull that out. Yours might be different. Mine's empty. Right, there is some fluid in there at the moment, but the other day when I checked it, it was empty. So I topped it up. Right, where the hell is all this fluid going? So let's put it all back. So you chase all the lines. All right, easy. No, it's not actually. You've got this this line here. Travels along there, blah, blah, blah. And I lose it somewhere over there. All right, so let's look for the obvious spots. Is there a leak under the truck? Oh, well, to be honest, there's a couple of leaks. But... Where's the one that we are looking for? Who knows? So anyway, got up under the truck. I'll show you where. Oh, fuck me. I'm getting ripped off. I mean, wow. Look at that. Oh, because I've pulled everything apart already, it's leaking out somewhere up the top here. Right. Just put that hose out of the way. Oh, anyway, while I hold all that, stop fluid. There's your bell housing. All right, your clutch thingy, majiggy. It's supposed to be up in that hole. I've removed mine. But where's the leak coming from? There's no leaks. Well, yesterday there wasn't. Anyway, so anyway, here's the. Oh, I've got to put this up somewhere high. Hang on. Right, start again. Here's the bell housing. It's supposed to be dry. I pulled the bung plug out at the bottom, and damn, some fluid came out. All right, I will be getting the camera up there to have a look, to inspect it, to make sure that the gizmos in here, the clutch plate, all that stuff, is still dry. It was bugger all fluid that did come out. Wasn't a hell of a lot. But that's where my leak was. So I removed the, I think it's called the slave cylinder. I'm not a mechanic, far from it. And obviously that's where it's leaking from because there's nothing dripping from under the truck until I pu pulled everything apart. Now it's leaking. There's still fluid in the system. Uh, give me a couple of seconds, tidy up my workbench and I'll show you what I found. Alright, so this is the gizmo that was supposed to be up there. I think it's called the slave cylinder. It's a slave something anyway. Alright, now your main line goes in here. So I crack that one first. I put a clear PVC tubing on the end here and loosened off the bleed nipple. Alright, so then, while inspecting, these are your components, roughly in order. Right, 
All right, this boot is rooted, so it's getting bent. So we'll stick it over there for the bending. All right, this piece is stuck in the boot, holding it all together so you don't lose it inside the bell housing. Do not lose this. This will be very difficult to get out. This is what operates in here and comes in and out, in and out. All right, then you got your split ring. Which goes in side there in this little groove. Well, I can get the camera right. Right in there. This weird device, washer thingy, o ring thing, was rooted. That is where I was losing all my stuff from, all my fluid into the bell housing. So it was pretty obvious that that was it. That then goes around in there and there is a right and a wrong way to do it and I'll show you how and of course the spring has a small end to a large end the small end sits on top of there which then goes in there in there with your o-ring on it and then your split ring goes in that locks all that into place so guys using my mobile phone um, I'll try and show you how I'm going to put it all together I'll talk you through it uh, just in case you're not mechanically minded very basic job I couldn't believe it so just to show you quickly how things work and why they work I'll show you with the old parts and then show you the new parts um, after I've done in the job what I plan to do first is lubricate of, of this piece just to make everything sit in there nicely you guys would have heard when changing a oil filter you put a little bit of clean oil around the lip where the o-ring is and this is the new one and it all slips and I figure do the same thing now for you West Australians birth brake parts well, 26 bucks for a brand new boot. She said, oh, what size do you need? And I said, I don't know. She offered me two. I grabbed the biggest one. And that sits over the top of there. And sits over that, that little lip in there. And it fits nicely. So what I've done is I've cleaned this up. I've used a can of this clean up, break cleaner stuff. Give it a scrub, old toothbrush, get in there, scrub it. It was quite crusty around the edge here and just inside here. It's all nice and shiny now. And I just use a little bit of wet and dry sandpaper just to clean the little rust particles and stuff. I used a bottle brush, which I have one here. I have used this particular one on the drill before, but not to do this job. I did all this by hand. I didn't want to get deep grooves or anything. Just wanted to loosen everything that was loose and get rid of it. Had to use a really fine screwdriver just to pick a little bit of the rust particles and off around, around the groove. Um, but I didn't want to scratch the surface. I don't know how important that is. I would imagine in here, inside, you wouldn't want a single scratch to ruin the rubber seal. To cut it or to um, create a groove that oil could leak from remember your, your clutch bell housing is supposed to be dry on the inside so it might might pay I'll have to do some research but I might even put a little bit of silicon sealant just around on this particular part sorry put you back on camera on this particular part just a very very thin layer um, again I'll do research on that make a few phone calls see if that's worth doing um, just just around on the surface to get a perfect waterproof seal um, there was no gasket I would imagine there's probably supposed to be one but there was no gasket there would probably recommend a paper gasket make one up and do that 
Uh, now, as for the seal, okay, this is the old one. I'm leaving the new one in there so I don't put the old one back on. The way this works is that is the outside. It's a cone, right? That rod sits in there, and this is your actual piston that just pushes back and forward with the spring. So, looking at it to the left is the front or the top or the outside. So, you got your egg. And yes, if you do drop that down there, it's a mongrel to get it out. Um, but if you find that you've removed the split pin and it still doesn't come out, just plunge it a couple of times. You don't have to have fluid in here. Just plunge it a couple of times and eventually it'll loosen up and the spring will pull it up enough where you can just grab hold of it and pull it out. But anyway, back to the seal. The seal is not perfectly 90 degrees around the edge. The underneath is wider than what it is on the top. The idea is when it plunges, it slides this way. But when it collects oil, it fills up in that groove, making it wider as it retracts back in. Therefore, making a tighter seal and no leak. Do not try and repair this thing by adding silicon glue or something to it. It won't work. Take this out, piss it off, throw it in the bin. So now I've shaken up my bottle. There's residue in the lid. I just dunked my finger in the lid, smeared it all over my part. And let's take this outside for better lighting and see oh it's too bright out here now there we go now you can see how the angle it's on right you can see how there's a groove in there and it's at the bottom so this is the way it goes if you want to talk about top and bottom all right it should sit something like this so it will slide this way nice and easy but that as it goes Try and get the focus on. Sorry about all the background crap. As it goes back, it will collect oil, expanding that rubber, making a tight seal so you don't get any leakage. To and from, to and from. All right, so now that I've done that, I shall tip it up that way because it'll be easier to clean under there if there's dirt on my table, which there is. Put the lid on on the bottle. Give it another shake. Take the lid off. And this is why I've been putting my phone down because this is brake fluid. Well, there's not much residue in there, but this is brake fluid. You don't want this shit all over your clothes, all over your phone, and all the rest of it. So wear some old stuff. Right, this stuff will eat your um, paint, if you've got any paint, whatever. Alright, get right in there. Alright, I don't think I'll have to go all the way down. I might just get some more. Alright. Same thing you do for you. Now, I've already cleaned this. I've already scrubbed it, wiped it, blown it out dry. Given it a good good damping right so now we put the little end on there so it should sit nice drop the big end in All right. and if I've done this right this should go down nicely might have to work it a bit All right and she plunges Right, pretty cool. Right, so now I need two hands. I'm going to push this in to hold it, and I'm going to put that um, split ring in into the groove while it's in this position. So I need two hands, and I'll show you the results afterwards. So, just quickly, there's the ring just sitting in here. So I laid the ring on top, 
and then put my finger down in the middle of the ring and the plunger push the plunger down and you can see the ring just below the lip there. there's a groove there for it to sit in that's it it's finished well done all right a little bit of lube make everything go in nice remember if rubber is wet you can cut it and split it very easily so now going to put the rod back in in through the boot all right the little end pretty obvious goes in the small hole 